hit testing in AR. WebXR has the ability to create geometry based on the view it sees via the camera. As you move and rotate your mobile phone, the camera view is being analysed by the software to find something it can identify as a surface. To see this in action, there's a great sample on the Mozilla WebXR iOS viewer app. Unfortunately, it uses a technique of showing the detected world that's not part of the agreed WebXR specification at the moment, so we can't fully build a compliant version. But if you do have an iPhone, it's well worth running the example. It will give you a great insight to how the code in this video is actually working. To work along with this video, open app.js in the start lecture 3 underscore 12 folder. The usual boilerplate setup. There's the addition of the load night method to load the night character we met in the previous video. Just a basic GLTF loader example. The aim of this video is to use the WebXR API to position a marker in the scene where a WebXR hit test hits real world geometry and then use this marker to position the knight or cause the knight to walk to the new location. Because we're using WebXR hit tests, we need to make sure this facility is available. Notice that for this example, the usual AR button has added the required feature hit dash test to the session init object. The first thing we need to do is to create the marker. In the init scene method add this dot reticle equals new three dot mesh, new three dot ring buffer geometry, 0 0.15, 0 0.2, 32 dot rotate x minus math dot pi divided by two, new three dot mesh basic material. This dot reticle dot matrix auto update equals false. This dot reticle dot visible equals false. This dot scene dot add, this dot reticle. Fairly self-explanatory, I hope with your level of 3GS knowledge. It uses a ring buffer geometry class to create a disk with an inner radius of 15cm and an outer radius of 20cm. So it's 40cm across, or about 1 foot 4 inches if you prefer imperial measurements. Remember units in WebXR are in the metric scale. We set the matrix auto update to false so that we can manually update its position. It's unnecessary for the 3GS library to update its matrix. Then we set the mesh visibility to hidden and add it to the scene. Great! If you've scanned through the code, you will have noticed a couple of methods we haven't met before. Request hit test source and get hit test results. If you slide down to the render method, you'll see that if frame is specified, and hit test source requested is false, then we call the method request hit test source. The purpose of this method is to assign the class property hit test source. This is the object we'll use for our hit tests. In the method, add this code cons self equal this, cons session equal this dot render dot xr get session, session dot request reference space, viewer, then function reference space. Session dot request hit test source space reference space then function source self dot hit test source equals source session dot add event listener end function self dot hit test source requested equal false self dot hit test source equals null self dot reference space equals null this dot hit test source requested equals true we get the current session, then request the viewer's reference space. The WebXR API makes extensive use of promises, so the syntax often has a method followed by then. Here, once we have the reference space, we use this to call the session method request hit test source. This method requires a reference space as a parameter. Again, it returns a promise. And this time, once the asynchronous method is returned, it receives the source which we store as the class property hit test source. As you can see, accessing a hit test source is a two stage process. First, get the viewer's reference space, then use this to get the hit test source. 
In the method we also add an end event listener to the session to set the class properties back to their defaults. If you test the app now you won't see the functionality we want. There's a couple more things to do. In the get hit test results method enter const hit test results equals frame dot get hit test results. This dot hit test source if hit test results dot length const reference space equal this dot renderer dot xr dot get reference space const hit equal hit test results zero const polls equal hit dot get polls reference space this dot reticle dot visible equals true this dot reticle dot matrix from array polls dot transform dot matrix else this dot reticle dot visible equals false Recall that for this method to be called the class property hit test source must be set. To use this property we need a frame. Notice in this example the render method has two parameters. The first is a time step and the second a frame. The frame is a WebXR API XR frame property. When XR is enabled using the set animation loop method of the renderer will ensure that the callback receives this required parameter. Don't use request animation frame, always use set animation loop to ensure this. In the render method, assuming hit test source is set, then the get hit test results method is called, receiving the required frame parameter. Frame has a get hit test results method that needs the hit test source. It returns an array of hits. If this is longer than zero, then we're interested in the first item in this list. Having got the hit, we need to get a pose from the hit using the get pose method, which requires a reference space. A pose has a transform property in relation to a reference space. The transform has position, orientation, and matrix attributes. Finally, now we have a suitable matrix, it's time to set the reticle visibility to true and set its matrix. A WebXR matrix is not the same as a 3GS matrix. It's a float32 array of length 16. To get a 3GS matrix from this we use the matrix4 method from array. Using this method assumes the data is in column major order. So indices 0 to 3 provide column 0, index 4 is the first row in column 1, etc. Running the app now and assuming you move the camera around a suitable view, you need a clear bit of floor around 1 meter square to be viewable. Then you'll see the reticle turn up, and once there it will stay centre screen as you move the view around, while appearing to be glued to the floor. But the aim is to view the nanite. There's one final step to complete this app. Find the onSelect function in the setupXR method and enter if self.night equals undefined, return. If self.reticle.visible, if self.night.object.visible, self.workingVec3, set from matrix position, self.reticle.matrix, self.night.newPath, self.workingVec3, else self.night.object.position, set from matrix position, self.reticle.matrix self.night.object.visible equals true. This function is triggered whenever you touch the screen. Notice we check that the night has been initialized and that the reticle is visible. Then we check if the night object is visible. If it isn't then we set its position to the reticle position using the set from matrix position method and make the night object visible. If not then we need to generate a new path for the night based on the new location of the reticle. We'll look in section 8 at pathfinding. For now it's enough to know that it causes the knight to appear to walk to the new location. That completes your introduction to WebXR. You've learned such a lot in this section. This video is from my Udemy course, Learn to Create WebXR VR and AR Experiences with 3GS. Get the full course at a great discount by following the link at nicklever.com forward slash courses.